Welcome to episode 52 of the XRM Toolcast. In this episode, Scott and I speak with former Global Director of Dynamics 365 Shield Service, Ben Vollmer. He spent over 16 years at Microsoft and currently serves as Senior Vice President of Product Management at IFS. Ben walks us through his involvement in the events that brought down the early version of Dynamics Serum Online. This will be a lovely trip down memory lane, back to the Serum 4.0 days, and when Serum Online and Xbox were actually related. Ben also ends the episode by talking about his interesting interpretation of bug-free software. So, sit back, relax, and let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the XRM Toolcast. With me, your host, Daryl Always Raising the Bar, my co-host, Scott Purple Box Hunter Drow. Is that, is that right, Scott? Was it the purple boxes you always hunt for? Is that what it was? Yeah, well, that's come back. Wow. Yeah, that was that was a number of episodes ago. I'm always interested to see what you're going to say about me in these opening state in these open yes. statements. But yeah, purple boxes. Yeah, they're the they're the best bit of the documents, right? You know, you just skim through, find the purple box. Uh, occasionally, you know, the, the yellow boxes as well, but the purple boxes. Purple's a particularly good color because it's associated <laughs> with power apps and stuff yes. like that. You know? Yes, yes, totally, totally, <laughs> totally. Uh, <laughs> so we um. We did some, uh, social, uh, polling, I guess, on Twitter and tried to come up with, um, anyone that had any good stories of things they've done to, to mess things up. I shared a couple, uh, before and Scott, like, that's a great idea. We, we need to do that. And so we posted out there and our guest today had one that was fairly impressive, uh, and sounded like it was one that, that needs to be shared and needs to be, uh, maintained so that more people know about it just, uh, for, uh, what he was able to, to do unintentionally, maybe. Um, so, um, our guest today is none, none other than Ben Vollmer. Ben, how's it going? I'm Daryl. Good to see you. And Scott, as always, nice to see you, sir. Yeah, it's good to see you, Ben, as well. Are, are you in a, 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 a cube? Is, is that what you're in? Because you have a new job, right? So this is a, a well-known phenomenon on, on social media that you've, you've moved on. Is that a cube that you're sitting in? It, 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 well, it's a thirty-foot-long like cube with a. It, 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 it's a. It, it, it's a camper. So I'm sitting, uh, sitting, sitting in, uh, sitting in an RV doing some work. That's right. You know, that's right. Why not? Cool. That's that style. That it really is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you could like travel. You know, you'd be a traveling nomad around. You do work from wherever you are. Nobody cares where I work from, so I, I work there. Yep. That's nice. Impressive. Yeah, impressive. nobody cares. Oh no, we care, Ben. Oh, oh, was, was that not what you meant? Is that what you well, were saying? You weren't I, saying I, that no one cares. It was just <laughs> people care that I do work, not when and where I do it from. How's that? Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so th this is this session um, a kind of a form of uh, confession. Is, is this is this what we're gonna? Is this the way we're gonna take this? I hear it's you good know, for your soul. It, it, it is it absolutely it, 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 confession stroke therapy perhaps you know perhaps we can you know you can just you could just uh, a cathartic moment where you can just let this out into the world and tell everyone about it, it, it actually what's funny is i don't think scott i've ever told anybody this story like, like this story was told once or twice internally but it was never it was never broadly shared it was one of those you know you know, chuckle stories and and, uh, and 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 move on. So this has not been a story we've ever, I've, I personally have ever broadly shared anywhere. All right, right. So, so this is good. This is this is <laughs> this is like the virgin sharing of it. So so lay the context. When was it? And and get the backstory. And, and let's let's uh, let's let our listeners hear uh, some of the ethnic uh, uh, decisions that were made that led to some of the results. So if you go back to the early days of CRM, we didn't have an authentication platform. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Microsoft at the time only had consumer brands. So Windows Live ID, it's now called Microsoft Account, was the only kind of publicly facing authentication mechanism that you could have as a customer. And so that was, uh, that was if, again, if you go back to the early days of CRM, that was how everybody authenticated was using a Microsoft account. Um, and I think we verified earlier that that, that is that. Yeah, you had that jet, your personal account. <laughs> it, it, now there was idea, two right? big problems with that. Right. But there was two, two there was two problems with that with that that approach. Um, 
do you remember what those problems were, Scott, by chance? That's your, not that you remembered it. You, you brought that repressed memory back. Do you remember what those those problems were? Well, well I mean, mainly that people didn't want to have like uh, their personal account when they were doing stuff with work. Mm -hmm. uh, that was I remember that being a kind of a challenge. It was like right, I don't even. A lot of people didn't even have a personal account. You know, they had to go and create, and then it was completely external to their whole work Active Directory side of things. Um, I don't know what was the other what was the other problem. <laughs> Uh, you had you would invite people, and there was a limit of three people per day you could invite from the same IP address. So if, if you created a Windows Live ID, it was three people per IP address per day. And the second problem was, always lots of fun, um, was that you were limited to 50 services in the Windows Microsoft account world. So if you had 49 customers or... 40, if you had an Xbox Live, a customer, um, a Hotmail account, anything else in there, if you had 20 customers, you were basically at 27 or 28 services linked to Microsoft account. I think the limit was 50. It might have been lower than 50, but it, it was a fairly uh, – it was not uncommon for technical specialists at Microsoft to run out of services from demoing CRM online. Because <laughs> nice. once you filled that slot, you, you you couldn't free it up. It wasn't like it was like it wasn't like a an application an active directory where you can go in and delete that application. Once you filled that slot, that slot was 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 locked forever to that service that it was. And each CRM online event was a separate slot in there. Hmm. So then once that was added and you'd maxed out that was it. Basically, you had to create a new Windows Live account. Was that it? Yep. You just couldn't use it anymore. Couldn't use it anymore. Chuck it. Go away. <laughs> Fantastic. It's All like right. a throwaway account. It's come a long way. <laughs> yeah, we certainly have. Well, in some ways. Uh, I'm going to see if I can bring up any more, uh, <laughs> any more uh, kind of bad uh but does anybody remember the commerce technology platform ctp does that ring any bells oh yeah ctp i remember that yeah it was, it was what the thing that kind of came up in in support calls all the time and and yeah um oh that's that's on that ctp that's on ctp and i I can't even remember what, what the support calls were about, but I just remember it burnt into my brain that it was always to do with CTP that was the issue. The commerce platform CRM Online used the time was the same one used for the Xbox. It was a business-to-consumer billing platform. Um, and and okay. don't, don't quote me, but I think Craig Unger, who is now at a company called Hyperproof, Craig was a former GM of CRM, Craig's claim to fame was he actually helped write the CTP for the Xbox team back in the day. So Craig Unger knew the CTP platform super well. Cool. But CTP meant you couldn't do an enterprise agreement with Microsoft. So if you had a, a corporate agreement with Microsoft, oh, the gymnastics that were involved were horrendous. So when you when you had a CR Online uh, account, you were basically using the same stack that you would be using if you were, had a gamer tag in on the Xbox platform. Is that right? Is that what you're it, saying? It, exact same stack. So, so the, the same bill you got from Microsoft was the same bill that, that you got from um, Microsoft for your, for your Office 365 personal subscription or your Xbox gamer tag or any of those things, Scott. Wow. I did not know that. That's um that's remarkable, really. I mean, I I can see why someone might think that was a good idea. You know, if you've already got something that's obviously scales pretty well, because you know I don't know how many people on the Xbox platform, but I can I can imagine there's quite a lot of them. Um, and so if I was starting out and you had all that tech, well, yeah, makes sense. Just let's just reuse that rather than write it again. Daryl, do you ever do you ever do you ever work with this Microsoft accounts or CTP? Does that that ring any bells to you? Nope. I, I didn't actually do any online works till I think 2013 because I was stuck at a oh. customer until at least that point. Uh, so I think I oh, missed you, most of that. You missed that then. 
I'm pretty sure that CTP actually was in there was parts I'm, I do remember seeing parts of the API so, you know when you're using Serum online there was it actually referred to CTP actually in some of the API stuff um, probably around the authentication the, the old legacy authentication stuff um, so yeah it, it's probably one of those things that people saw but didn't realize that actually what it meant was was Xbox <laughs> Well, that would have been again, better. That, that, that's, that would have been way better if it actually said Xbox in, in the authentication <laughs> API. <laughs> but that's one of those things where Microsoft had it, they used it. It, it you know, they didn't have a choice of, you know, the CRM team wasn't going to build a commerce platform to, to, to drive their, they couldn't build a commerce platform and launch CRM online. That wasn't going to happen. So they had to pick one. So they, they launched CRM online and used a, I would say that they, they retrofitted poorly a, a commerce platform and authentication platform, which was, you know, MSAs and, and CTP. Now the fun part of the story here, but this has been a buzz, but, but for those of you listening, this is probably about as boring as watching paint dry. Um, the, the, the fun part though, was that in 2012, July of 2012, Microsoft made it made a decision to move CRM over to this new platform called Office 365. So they actually moved the CRM servers from CTP to where they are now in the whole tenant and organization models we have today. So that was July of 2012. You know, so so Daryl, you were just coming, you came online a year later. So Scott, do you remember that at all? I mean, that, that was a huge kind of seismic shift for for for, for the CRM online platform. Oh yeah. I remember it being really exciting because, you know, Office 365, there was a real buzz around it um, back then. You know, this whole kind of, you know, and, and SharePoint Online was sort of, you know, kind of being a real key part of that. So, yeah, I remember it. The move was like, oh, actually, this whole CRM online thing is actually becoming a bit more mainstream. That's what it felt felt like. You know, it felt like this thing that was out on a limb over here was sort of being brought into the fold and taken seriously for the first time. Do you remember what Office 365 was called before it was Office 365? Well, there was, it was all online. There was a SharePoint online and an Exchange online Office and all that. Com. There was... Be, be, before that, BPOS, B-P-O-S, Business no, Productivity Online Suite. Ah, uh, yes. BPOS, yes. Of course, yeah. Yeah. And that, and BPOS, you go to the BPOS portal and then there will be SharePoint online underneath that. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, goodness me! Wow, this is a real trip down memory lane. <laughs> well, and well I, I remember for a long time I didn't know what BPOS stood for either. <laughs> and I was like, I was using BPOS in like in conversations about various different implementations, and I, and I was like, I just hope no one asks me what it stands for because I don't. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure CT, <laughs> CTP was the same thing as well. I, don't, I think I, it took me a long time to actually put all everything together and work out what they stood for. Scott's being reminded of everything he he has forgotten. <laughs> he, he's wiped it, Daryl. It, it, it's a selective wipe. He's forgotten the traumatic memories. <laughs> but but BPOS was all, was available in two flavors at the time. There was BPOS D and BPOS S. So there was BPOS dedicated and BPOS shared. As, as confusing as that is, my customer was an early BPOS adopter um, for commercial reasons, nothing technically. For strictly commercial reasons, you could not blend BPOS S and BPOS D. The, 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 the two were, you know, the United States church and state. They, they were two separate. You, could, you were not allowed to blend the two of them together in any way, shape, or form. And that was purely a commercial decision Microsoft made. My customer was a massive BPOS D user. We had to go get special approval from everybody and their brother to, to allow this customer to use CRM online in this new Office 365 environment because that was basically the BPOS S environment and they were in a BPOS D environment. So does, does that make sense? So, so you had this, this customer had the dedicated BPOS, shared BPOS or shared Office 365 is what we all use today. The customer, we had to go get like, I just remember there, there was an email chain at some point had like, you know, nine CVPs on it approving this 
customer being able to utilize both at the same time. The architecture, a lot of those early online products was basically the on-premise version that that just kind of being moved and had a kind of a a wrapper around it to enable to be used in a cloud kind of way. Um, So that kind of makes sense, you know, having that dedicated uh, a dedicated environment, you know, if someone wanted to have the guaranteed performance, um, you know, what was the reason why, was it just an ex- more expensive to go to the dedicated than the shared? Was that the, the main reason? Uh, like three or four X more expensive, Scott. It was ridiculously right. more expensive. Okay. It, it was more like a managed service. Mm. I mean, really, it was really a Microsoft managed service that we ran in our data center versus your data center. It was the only difference. Kind of reminds me of FinOps, really, as the way it is today. You know, you, you can have dedicated instances with lifecycle services. Yeah, but this actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, controversial. <laughs> so you had this customer that that they needed to uh, use the Office 365 environment, and they were moving from the dedicated into Office 365. Mm-hmm. They're doing both simultaneously. They're doing both. Okay. So, so their yeah. exchange, their exchange server was dedicated, but we set up a special shared instance for yeah. in a BPOS S environment. So we had a BPOS D and a BPOS S, and it was a whole that that was a massive uh, to do at Microsoft around the two of them in the same the same, the same customer. It was, it was it was a pretty big deal. So that all sounds this all sounds reasonable so far. It, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it is. So where do you come in? Where, I come... <laughs> where, 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 where do you come in? Where were the mistakes made? <laughs> I, the mistakes were made. Um, I, I, I feel this is, uh, you know, this is leading up to a point where you, you uh, accidentally deleted something. or No, no, it wasn't quite that bad. You Okay, so d- discovery service. If the discovery service goes down, what happens to your CRM deployment? You well, can't access it. Yeah, it's, hot, it's hosed. Discovery so, service goes down. Everything's hosed. It, how many discovery services are out there today for CRM or Power Apps or whatever we want to call the the the, the artist formerly known as CRM? <laughs> um, well, it's just a it was just one discovery service. That's that's kind of the point, isn't so, it? You know, so you can go there and you can find out government at government availability some too, maybe not. Or is there just one? There's more than one. There's I think. There, at one point, there was only one, but as Microsoft built out data centers, they added more and more discovery services. So you have CRM four, CRM five. Each one of those got the, got its own data cluster of discovery services. And one of the reasons for right. that yeah. was my customer had in their Active Directory description of a user had an illegal double byte character. We all love double bytes, right? Mm. Like an emoji. It, like, yes. <laughs> it, 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 it was an emoji a, in your uh, Active Directory. See what happens. It, it was it was actually a, a, a Japanese character that I don't remember what it was, but it was a Japanese character that was not part of Unicode. It was actually like a Japanese character that came in from some other way. My customer set up... Active Directory sync. So they took their Active Directory and they synchronized it to BPOS S or Office 365 shared. And then the discovery service fired off. I got an outage email in my inbox saying CRM online is down. And I got a phone call from uh, Bill Burton going, is this your customer? Yes. Could you have them go edit this user right now? (laughs) Like right now. (laughs) Sure, (laughs) Bill, what's up? Go fix it and we'll talk. Yes, sir, Bill. Now, was this during working hours or is this like, you know... You... Oh, yeah, the, you know, the work hours. This was this was four in the afternoon. So no, I mean, it could, it could have been like in the middle of the night. I mean, it's like you ring them up and say, sorry to wake you up, but could you just like rename Scott. your user? <laughs> well, it was the middle of the night, Scott, because the, the user was in Japan. Uh, well, so now it doesn't seem unreasonable to have a <laughs> some kind of... <laughs> Yeah. Unicode character then, really. <laughs> I thought it was just someone just, you know, saying, I wonder what happens if. <laughs> but that was probably their name, right? So... It, it, it was, it was a, as I recall, it was a, it was a double byte character that was not part of the, the Unicode 
it was, it was like it was on the keyboards, but it's not an official double byte character. So it was one of those things where it was a it was a it was a it wasn't what hmm. it, it was one of those again one of those weird anomalies where no developer in the right mind is like nobody's gonna ever use those kind of characters in this field. Who would do that? Um, and, and so yeah. So so how did you get hold of them if it was the middle of the night in Japan? Well, I called my I called the CIO of the company and said. Um, I need you to do me something for me really, really fast. Um, would you have your Active Directory team go in and edit this user, please? And about 10 minutes later, I got a call back from their, their network engineer going, you want me to do what? I'm like, I can't tell you why, and I can't tell you what, and I can't tell you why I need this to happen, but I need you to take that user and change their name now, please. Like now, like right now, <laughs> like, right, like now. And they, and they did. So, and, and no questions asked. Just like no. It. No, well, then they had then they had to do an Active Directory sync, and this company had quarter of a million users. So if you do an AD sync, wow. that's that's not a three second operation. Yeah, AD sync. So it would just basically go through each individual and just kind of sync them, and you'd hope that that was it at the beginning, or was it just like you know one of the last <laughs> users to be synced? Uh, 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 an hour later. CRM online came back up. Did you tell them eventually? Like, by the way, now we fix this issue. We can tell you what it was. Um, the delicate thing in doing that is there was no error checking. Like, like whoever developed that piece of code just assumed that any data coming in was good, and so they didn't do any error checking in the code. And I don't know about you, but I can't go back to a customer and say, "Hey, Scott." My guy didn't put any air checking in there. We're sorry, we fixed it now. Well, you could say that to a developer. If they were developers, they'd understand because they go, "Yeah, yeah, it could have been me, really." But, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> CTO maybe not. <laughs> Having seen Daryl's code snippets on Twitter. I could see him, his customers, maybe <laughs> having that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I can just wow. see Daryl, Daryl publicly shaming somebody on Twitter about it. <laughs> I never <laughs> like, named look at this code. Unless it's my own. Come on, people. Uh, uh, it's humorous. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's like, oh, what are they thinking? <laughs> so, so you single-handedly brought down, brought it all down for well, over uh, an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It wasn't Ben's code. <laughs> it was just Ben's customer. Hey, but look. but I, I'm, I'm guessing your your boss didn't see it that way. <laughs> if if it was Ben's code, it never would have started working to begin with. <laughs> it's, it's hard to argue with things do, when you're do, good enough and you can't make it better than the person that made it. Do you have any code still in production, Ben? Do you have any code out there in the wild? Because yeah, if there is, everyone's going to start sending it double byte characters. You can guarantee. <laughs> No, he's um, learned his lesson. He, he handles that. Uh, that's been handled now. Uh, there actually probably is some 2011 code I've written out there floating around. And there's still some Power BI hmm. stream analytics code I've written. So there, there probably is a little piece of code here and there I've written, Scott, over the years. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I find, you know, when, you, when you're a developer writing code, you, you you've got this sort of... I don't know, this, this baggage that you take with you, you know, all, all the code that you have out in production, you know, you, you, it's always there, it's going to be with you. For, and then suddenly you find, some, oh, you know, something's been retired and suddenly there's like a weight lifted, you know, it's like a, <laughs> it's a moment that you have to savor. And you go, I don't, I don't have that baggage anymore, I can just move on. <laughs> I, I have a very, very poor track record when it comes to the code that I've written still being in production. It, it uh it's not good. First company I worked with out of, out of college fired all their .NET developers a week after I left the company. So they got rid of all the code that I would have written. Uh, next <laughs> company I worked for, uh, about three years after I left, they went bankrupt. And so any code I wrote for that is gone. Uh, next company I went with, uh, was working as a contractor, spent three years working for them, doing upgrades for them. And about a year and a half after I left, the government basically said you need to pay like a Three hundred billion dollar loan, and they couldn't afford it, so they went bankrupt. So all that code's gone. Uh, another company I worked with in between that one, 
they decided to move away from Dynamics, and so all the code I wrote for that is gone. And then the last company I worked for, uh, they were bought by a bigger company, and they they said you have to do Salesforce. And so for two and a half years worth of work is gone because they are being forced to switch over to, to Salesforce. So um, I think I've got three clients that I spent less than three months on that still are actually using CRM. That's that's it. Out of over a decade of CRM work, I've had only three months worth of code that are probably still being used in production. So. Purely coincidental, though, right? Yeah, I'm sure that there's no. I'm sure there's no correlation. <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> there might be some causality, though. Scott, if you think about it, there's probably might be some definite causality there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say it. That's the difference between you and me, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> a full head of hair and boyish good looks? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well no, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's no causality. I'm sure it's 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 just purely circumstantial and, and, and just random. I, I, I used to do, back in the day, I used to do a lot of... Um, Microsoft uh, Commerce Server and Content Management Server work. So I, I, I periodically go back on the Wayback Machine, you know, the Internet archives, and look, look back at old sites that have kind of since gone to the gone to the grave, but they're still there. <laughs> That's of course all the CSS that I can't carefully crafted is all being stripped out. <laughs> One of the places I worked at, we had a couple other oops moments. Like once they had a separate database that they're reporting for their sales, uh, the salespeople, and they were checking their commissions because they were almost entirely commission based. And so they'd check their commissions two or three times a day. And we were doing some sort of upgrade. And so they needed to wipe the staging environment and then refresh it with um, uh, an old version of it. And the person that was supposed to do it actually wiped the production environment rather than stage. And I was got an email like, hey, this is down. So I went to talk to the, the database guy. It was just a few, few cubes down. Back in the day, we all worked together. And I was like, hey, why is production down? He's like, oh, no. <laughs> he went he's like, oh, no. And, and uh, I think he spent the next eight or, or ten hours stuck at the office trying to restore from some other backup and handle all that kind of fun stuff. So, that, yeah, that was, a, that was also the company where they stored all of their, their prices and cents as a – and cents because they couldn't handle uh, decimals in their database because it was like in the 70s, I guess. And there was a developer that uh, was doing a change to the website and forgot that they had already divided the value by 100 to get the dollar value. And so they divided it by 100 again. So now the $999 TV was now $9.99. And right when they realized it, there was a fire alarm that went off. <laughs> And so everyone had to evacuate the building, Oops. and he just got in his car and left. And he, he didn't like so someone else like had to realize the mistake and fix it. Because uh, the other guy just left. He's like, it's, "I'm done." He just left. <laughs> so Daryl, he pulled a reverse office office space then. Yes, yes, basically. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Set it on fire. And then yeah. I do. I do think that uh, you know taking all of the CRM online customers down is um, is definitely up there with the uh, the biggest impacts you can have for a single character. <laughs> it's like, I mean, how many how many customers were there back then? I mean, I'm because I mean, CRM online we took a, took a, did take a while to kind of get really popular. Um, but I'm guessing back then there were there was still there was a fair number. There were a, there was a well like we were one of the first customers on the new billing billing model. So so we were one of the first ones on that new billing platform. So that the impact was under 50 or 60 customers. It wasn't a huge huge impact. But the problem is is that CRM Online had at the time had a financially backed SLA. So if we weren't at four nines or five nines we paid you back money and a lot of money. So for every minute that was down, it cost Microsoft a, a good amount of money. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go explain to my boss why we got to pay customers back a couple million bucks this, this, this month because of a character and uh, that, that shouldn't be there to begin with. I, I feel that like there is the story of the person who, whose name actually had to be changed as well. There's this, there's this, there's like that backstory of someone coming into work and, and realizing that, what? that, 
they couldn't log on because then their username was different. <laughs> what well, it was it wasn't their username. Last name or the, or first no, it wasn't the last name. The no, that changed right. No, in an Acre directory, there is your 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 name, and then there's a there's a description field, and the description field was designed only to hold single byte characters. Ah, right. So okay. it, it was the AD. It wasn't even their name. It was the it was their description field, or you know, that that brought this thing down. Yeah, there was um. There was that story with someone uh, naming their child drop table student. <laughs> Bobby, drop, Bobby drop tables. Yeah. It's an XKCD um, comic. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it, it does sound too crazy to actually be real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have a, he's like talking to their like uh, to their school, I think, that he managed to like disrupt something. Well, maybe you should have thought about... Uh, uh, it, safely checking your data before we process it or something like that <laughs> yeah 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 well, well, i put in the chat window there was a guy whose license plate was null but and ull on. and he got a bunch of speeding tickets from from having a license plate of null because <laughs> like there was all of these other license plates that all of these uh, tickets that couldn't be attributed to anybody that he got <laughs> Well, there, there was a, wasn't there some kind of geocoding tag issue as well, where similar sort of scenario where they there was this random farm in the middle of the nowhere, which mm -hmm. was like got when there was like a geocoding error, it was it was always at these coordinates. There were default coordinates, and they used to get like hate mail and all sorts of stuff because when they had the IP, I think it was IP encoding, you know, where you you know you decode an IP address mm -hmm. to find out where it comes from. If the geocoding didn't work, it would give out these default coordinates and the farm that they happen to live at those default coordinates. So when people were doing Internet searches to try and find out where that IP address came from, it was their farm if it couldn't match it. <laughs> so all these nefarious act activities seemed like they were coming from this one guy. Yeah, sucks to be them. There's, there's always bugs in software. NASA's, uh, you know, NASA's blunder where they... Uh sent a, something to Mars and one team was using metric uh, units and the other was using English standard units and and for some reason they couldn't quite get the thing to work right because <laughs> one was like, no, it's this, it was this and it, and it uh, ended up crashing straight into Mars because they couldn't get it figured out right. So <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, well that, that, that statement that you just made there, Daryl, is an absolute truth. There is always bugs in software. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I don't think. I don't think you know. You could ever say that. Uh, yeah, this software is bug free. <laughs> well, I, you know, maybe, maybe there is somebody that can say that, but I don't. <laughs> whether it's true or not is a different matter. <laughs> there is bug free software, Scott. It's software nobody's using. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. It's if a tree falls in the middle of a forest. And nobody hey, hears it. Wait, wait, wait. So Daryl can, Daryl can claim <laughs> now that he has bug-free software. Daryl has written more bug-free CRM plugins than anybody else in this world because nobody's using it. Yeah, it's very the zen, <laughs> the zen of software. Exactly. If there is no one to experience the bug, <laughs> does the bug I've, really exist? I have probably 150 plugins that will never, no one will ever, ever find a bug in because no one ever, ever uses it. Yeah, like like Ben says, bug-free. Bug free. I think we can take this as a win. Yes. Let's end it, let's end it on a good note. Rather than all this horrible stuff, bug free software. Software no one no one uses. So does that mean that until you've deployed your code into production it doesn't have any bugs in as well? Yeah. So like, you know, when you're writing the code it has no bugs. Only if you don't have a testing department. <laughs> so just don't test the code. Yeah, but before testing it gets them. But it has no bugs, no test. Works on my machine. It's hardcore. Yeah, hardcore software deployment. Yeah, just just deploy it, ship it. <laughs> uh, well, Ben, uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we appreciate uh, the way back machine here and uh, learning about things that uh, existed before I got into it, and things that Scott forgot that he knew about back when he got into it. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure most of our uh, listeners uh, had known as well. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so now uh, now that there's that, that's impossibility to do that now because we actually have more than one discovery service and and uh, hopefully someone's added some error checking in there to handle uh, invalid characters. So um, 
So, Scott, uh, so Ben, if, if people want to get a hold of you, um, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Uh, over LinkedIn, honestly. LinkedIn is the best way to get a hold of me, Daryl. It, it, it's, uh, I, I check it religiously. All right. So if I need to go to Ben, I'll just send him a LinkedIn message. Now that we're friends, we weren't we weren't actually connected before, so now I, we're connected. I, I was surprised about that, man. And I, I didn't know. I was like, hey, we never actually connected. That's interesting. <laughs> so, but, but now we have. Now we have. One of these days, I'll be friends with Scott. <laughs> me, me too. Yeah. Oh, one of these days. One, one of these days. days. I can't get, can't make any guarantees, there, Daryl. Sorry. Yes. You know. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just um, just distracted because I'm just opening up LinkedIn and I'm just sending a message to Ben with lots and lots of Unicode non-printable <laughs> characters to see what happens. It's going to be too, many, it's too Japanese uh, Unicode char yeah. characters. You can say if you find that LinkedIn messaging has gone down in the next hour or so, you know why. <laughs> Well, uh, Scott, that's how uh, our listeners can get a hold of Ben and, and see what he's doing. Uh, how can they get a hold of us? Well, you can email us at cast at xmtoolbox.com or you can get hold of us on Twitter or, or indeed LinkedIn if it's still up um, using at xmtoolcast. We'd okay. love to hear from you. And we have a reminder that we are looking for uh, the best letters we can possibly get to be read on air and to get uh, some swag of some sort. Uh, in response, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to your letters. Yeah, looking forward to it. So, um, that's that's all we got. So, Ben, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. And we, uh, yeah, just thank you for your time. Thanks for having us. I mean, guys, appreciate yeah, it. thanks, Ben. This has been the XM Toolcast with Jonas Rapp and Daryl Labar. If you have any questions for Jonas or I, or suggestions for future episodes, please send them to cast at xroomtoolbox.com or tweet to xroomtoolbox.com.